Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today I want to talk about some more infrastructure issues and specifically what I want to talk about are uninterruptible power systems. So we're going to talk a little bit about QNAP and we're also going to talk about using uh, uninterruptible power systems on other systems as well. So anyone running a NAS server should have a backup source such as a UPS. UPS backup should be designed to provide 15 to 20 minutes of backup power in the event of the loss of your utility power. So QNAP NASs support UPS configuration and they can monitor the battery status and initiate orderly shutdown in the event of a power failure. So there's something called Network UPS Tools, or NUT for short, and it's an open source package that provides a set of tools that can control or monitor connected hosts. And QNAP uses the NUT project to manage UPS connectivity on its NAS systems. And if you haven't seen that setting, here it is right here, and that's what we're going to get into today, along with using NUT in general. So here we are logged into one of my QNAP NAS systems. And if we simply go to Control Panel, and we go to General Settings, and go down to where it says External Device, you can see that there is a UPS tab. And so I have identified the fact that I have a USB connection to a UPS unit, which is a CyberPower 1500 model. And I have it set to turn off the server after the AC power fails for five minutes, as an example. Or I could also say the system will enter auto protection mode after the AC power fails for a certain number of minutes. And the note here says that auto protection mode will cause the NAS to stop all running services and unmount all volumes to protect your data. And when the power restores, the NAS will reboot and resume to its previous state. And then uh, very important here for our work later is you're going to want to enable this checkbox that says enable network UPS master. So um, UPS NUT drivers, and that's what we're actually configuring here. We're actually configuring the NUT utility. The NUT utility has the concept of both a master and a slave. The master is the device that has the hardware connection, the USB cable going to your UPS unit, and the slave is the system out on your network that you want to have follow the NAS uh, master and uh, be able to actually perform a shutdown based on the state of what's going on there. <clears throat> and then specifically, the way that QNAP set it up is they have access control that prevents you from having to uh, go down and dink with the files specifically. So you can go ahead and add the addresses of the various systems that you have here uh, that you want to have follow this particular NAS. And so down here you can see that it says that my uh, model number for this particular system is an OR1500. It's a rack. This particular one is a rack mountable uh, UPS system from CyberPower. And we're going to be working with a couple of other UPS systems I have here in my home lab as well. So QNAP's done a pretty basic job in terms of providing you statistics on your UPS units. And so one of the things we're going to learn in this video is how to run a web program called UPS Stats. And UPS Stats is a uh, CGI website that basically can display some uh, statistics for your various UPS units. The first unit I have listed here called Rack UPS is the UPS in my rack connected to the QNAP NAS that we were just looking at. And it says the status online and the battery's at 100%. It gives you various basic information. You can also go click on that particular system 
and it will show you the battery charge and voltage and input output load information, which is really handy to have. So in addition to that, I have desk side UPS, which is connected to my other QNAP NAS, same types of information, but it is a CyberPower CP5500 ABR. And then finally, uh, I have two other units here, and that is the Office UPS, which is hosting my desktop computer and a few other items in my office. And then finally, the Family Room UPS, which is a UPS that is inside my entertainment center, and it handles my multimedia receiver, and it also handles uh, my uh, TV and some other peripherals in there. So... Um, the way that this works is I actually have a Raspberry Pi that's connected via USB cable to that particular UPS in the entertainment center, and that's how we're receiving this information. For the purposes of our first test, we have here a CyberPower 1500, and you can see a Pi 3B here with one gigabyte of memory, and it is connected to power here uh, going off to a power plug that is in the back of the UPS on one of the battery plugs. And then we have here uh, an Ethernet cable that is going down and connecting to a switch that I have here next to my desk. And then finally, I have this braided cable, which is a USB cable, and it goes into the USB port on the back of the UPS, which facilitates communication between the Raspberry Pi and the UPS. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna set this Pi up as being a nut master uh, for the purposes of providing statistics for this UPS unit. This is a terminal SSH'd into that Pi and we're gonna do a sudo apt install of the nut package the NUT client, and also the NUT server. Now we probably don't need all the pieces for this, but I just wanted you to know what all the pieces are that are involved in order to do both the client and the server. And the NUT package is documented very well online, but it's also extremely complex because it has a lot of moving parts. Now that the NUT package is installed, I'm going to do an LSUSB, and you can see that the CyberPower 1500 is connected to bus 1 device 4. Now, there is also a command that we can use now that we have the NUT package installed, and it is sudo space NUT dash scanner space dash U, and it will go ahead and indicate what is currently installed and it's saying that you have this nut device here installed you can go ahead and copy the information for your particular UPS and then what we want to do after that is we want to go edit a file and in that file we're going to tell it about our UPS so we're going to go edit with the sudo command forward slash Etsy, forward slash nut, forward slash UPS dot conf. And now when we go in here, you can see that there are a whole lot of different things that are currently set up and configured. Um, this is just a template file kind of describing all the types of things that you can do with this file. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and clear this out. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put what we simply require in that file. Through the magic of video, I've gone ahead and pasted what we got back from the nut-scanner-u command, and I've changed the name here to test pi. It's just the name of my system. You might want to give it the name of your UPS, but since this is just a test, I went ahead and give it the name test pi. I've also added poll interval equals one and max retry equals three. In all the examples I can see for NUT server, those are the most common parameters that are provided there. So now I'm gonna do a control X. Yes, I wanna save the modified buffer and I hit enter. 
The next file I want to go ahead and edit is this file called forward slash Etsy, forward slash nut, forward slash UPSD dot users. When I go into this file, they give you lots of examples here on how the user accounts are filled out. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete all this and put in a very simple example. You can look at the template and make your own decision about what you might want to have in terms of user accounts. Uh, right now, since this lab is on my trusted local network, I'm not too concerned about security. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this admin. I'm going to give it a password of 123456. I think that password can be up to about eight characters, but you might want to choose a complex password. And then um, it's going to be an admin and this is a master server. So we save that out. The next file we want to edit is going to be forward slash Etsy, forward slash nut, forward slash upsmon.conf. And again, this has got a template file that has all kinds of data in here, giving you all the examples. It's pretty wordy. And I'm just going to go ahead and clear this out and put what I think we need in here. So I'm going to do a bunch of control K's, clear out this gigantic file. And then ultimately I am going to paste in the content that I found that works for me. So I have a run as user root. And then I'm going to say monitor testpy at localhost because this is the host that is uh, connected directly to the CyberPower UPS unit. This one means that there's only one uh, UPS connected. In some complex configurations, you can actually have multiple UPS units connected to the same system. And then I'm using username admin as you noticed in the previous file, and then the password of 123456, and I'm indicating that this is going to be a master server. And then there are two uh, parameters I've noticed I needed to add after running this for about 24 hours. I had a little bit of a problem. I came back and I added, um, I added this uh, parameter called dead time. It's supposed to be dead time at 25 and max age at 25. So we're going to go ahead and save that. The next file that we need to edit is forward slash Etsy, forward slash nut, forward slash upsd.conf. And again, we have a lot of template information in here. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. And then I'm going to paste in what I noticed works at minimum. If I can just find out where I put it. The cut buffer is a ma marvelous thing if you can remember what you've left in it. Okay, so this is important because by default, if you look at that template file, you'll see that it's set to listen on 127.0.0.1, which means it really only listens to itself. Port 3493 is the reserve port that the NUT server uses. And then I've set it up to where it listens to anybody on your network, uh, both on TCP IP version 4 and TCP IP version 6. And that just allows anybody to connect to this server and determine what the status of this connected UPS is. Now the last file we need to edit is forward slash Etsy, forward slash nut, forward slash nut dot C-O-N-F. And when we bring it up again, it has a template with a whole bunch of stuff in it, which I'm going to go ahead and delete because there's really only one thing that goes into it. And that is mode equals. And by default in that file, it's mode equals none, which basically means that this thing doesn't do anything. So we have to set up our mode to be what we want. And choices of this here are standalone which means that it's, uh, it just monitors the ups connected to it and doesn't do anything else. The other option is net client, which means that it is a client uh, talking to and getting status from another ups. But in our case, this is going to be a 
net server. And the reason for that is because this Raspberry Pi is connected directly to the UPS unit. So it is considered to be the server. Now, in order to get all this working at this point in time, you should be able to just do a UPS C command to test it. But I discovered through a lot of trial and error that there's two additional things that you need to do. So after editing your files, you may want to go out and do a sudo chown nut uh, forward slash etsy forward slash nut of all those files. That basically allows nut to own all the nut project files. So user nut now owns those files. Once you've done that, the next step is to do a restart on the nut server. And that's a forward slash etsy forward slash init dot d forward slash net dash server restart. It should prompt you for your password. When you type in your sudo password, it should say authentication complete. At that particular point in time, we should be ready to test this out. And the way we can test it is with the command upsc space test pi, because that's the name that I named my UPS unit, even though it's really the pi, <laughs> but it really is the UPS unit at localhost. When we hit enter, we get back a whole series of parameters. And so you'll get battery charge and all these other things. This lets you know that the system is actually working. And furthermore, you can do things like uh, type in ups.model and it'll come back and give you just the UPS model. And don't worry about this init SSL without certificate database. I really don't think you need SSL on your own private network, but if you do, that's up to you. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and build this UPS stats application because I think that will be useful. In order to do that, we're going to go back to our QNAP NAS. We can dismiss our control panel. We're going to go into Container Station. And in Container Station, I'm going to create myself a LexD container uh, for Ubuntu. So I go click on Create. I type in Ubuntu. I hit Enter. I go over to the column entitled LexD Image Server. I scroll down and I find uh, Ubuntu Jammy, which is the latest version. I click install. System thinks for a minute, and I'm just going to call this um, CGI stats. Let's see, CG, let's just call it uh, CG stats. Don't know what a good name is, but we'll try this. And then I'll just say the CPU limit can be 10%. And it only needs a maximum of like 2048, two gigabytes. I'm sure it doesn't even need that. It probably worked with one gigabyte just fine. In fact, let's go ahead and try that. Let's give it 1024. And then under advanced settings, I'm going to refresh my MAC address so it's bolded, so it gets the same MAC address every time. And I'm going to go down and change from NAT to bridged. And I'm going to bridge onto my main network. So I do a create and I do an OK. It says privilege mode requirement. If you're running advanced protections on your SIFs and SMB, you're going to get this warning. And I'll go ahead and say yes, and then it will create the container. If I go up here and click on the progress, you can see it's creating it, it's downloading, and it should be started shortly. We can now see that CG Stats has been started correctly, so we can go down and click on it. When we get in here, it's prompting us for a login, but we don't have a login yet because LexD containers will not provide us a login. So we click on terminal. We type forward slash bin forward slash sh and we get a terminal screen here, which we're going to blow up significantly. And maybe not that big. <laughs> And we're going to go add, well, first we should do an apt update because you should always do that on a brand new created container. And then we're going to do an add user Scott to add a user account, typing in a password. 
And I didn't do the password right, so try again. And that time it worked. And now I'm going to do a user mod. Dash A, capital G, pseudo Scott, giving Scott pseudo privilege. Then I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. Back here on the terminal window screen, I'm going to go ahead and type in my new username and my new password. It will log me in. And I'm going to do an I'm going to do a sudo apt remove dash dash purge on open ssh dash server just to remove the currently installed version and it doesn't even have a version installed so we're going to do a sudo apt install open ssh dash server and now we have a newly refreshed set of keys for our SSH server for this machine. And once this completes, we'll do an IPA to find out our address and then we'll SSH into it. Okay, I can exit out of this. I can create myself a terminal. Whoops, guess I didn't find out the address. Let's go back in here again. And do an IPA and you can see that it is running on my main network at address 172.16.1.97 so now I'll go ahead and bring the terminal back up uh, the big terminal in the background here we'll go ahead and minimize it that's our Pi and we'll go SSH 172.16.1.97 and that should be our test machine and we type in our password and we're now type we're now logged into CGS stats okay so to install our web server we're going to do a sudo apt install Apache 2 and also nut dash CGI we're going to provide our sudo password it will go ahead and install all the requisite software in order to run the website now that the web server is installed, we want to do a sudo nano forward slash etsy forward slash nut forward slash host dot conf. And we don't have nano installed, so it looks like we're going to have to do a sudo apt install nano. And now we'll back up to that command again, edit the host file. You can erase everything in the host file, get it to the end. And now what we want to do is a monitor of testpy at 172.16.1.130, which is the address of the pi. And then this is going to be the title that I've got for it. I'll just say uh, testpy space UPS. And then we'll go ahead and save that file with a control X and a Y. And now the next step is to do a A2 EN mod CGI to enable CGI module, a sudo systemctl restart like it tells us to do. And now our website should be up and running. And actually, there is one more step we need to perform. We need to do a sudo nano forward slash etsy forward slash nut forward slash ups set dot conf. And when you go into this file, you can erase everything that's in here until the end. And it has a section that says, I have secured my CGI directory. You can simply uncomment that phrase and do a control X and end it. And at this point in time, if we do an IP A, you can see that this LexD host is running at 172.16.1.97. If we go back to our web browser over here and we open a new tab, all we have to do is paste in 
172.16.1.97 forward slash CGI dash bin forward slash nut forward slash UPS stats dot CGI. And when I hit enter, it comes up and there is the TestPy UPS system. If we click on it, you can now see graphically what that UPS is doing. And you can, of course, add other things to that file called upsset.conf, and you can have multiple systems, as in my example at the beginning of the video. So here I've created a Ubuntu virtual machine, and we're going to use this as our nut client to talk to our nut server on the Raspberry Pi. So all I really need to install here is the nut client with the sudo apt install nut dash client. And once that's installed, then we should be able to go ahead and edit the configuration for it. All right. So the first file we want to configure is going to be uh, forward slash Etsy forward slash nut forward slash UPS mon dot conf. And we don't have nano installed here. That figures sudo apt install nano. This is what happens when you do a throwdown VM. <laughs> you don't know what in. OK, so we'll go edit that file and it does a permission denied, of course, because I forgot to do a sudo since it's in the nut directory. So we do a sudo in this file. Again, we have the template file. I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything out of the template file just by holding down control K in nano, which deletes lines. And this is a really big template file. This file is pretty massive and has a lot of detail in it. And I've gone back and forth doing a lot of testing and I'll try to explain this. So first of all, run as root uh, with the root account and that's fine. Um, you can set it up to be an individual user account if you want, uh, and that'll work too. So the monitor command is very important because you have to have monitor. The name of the uh, remote UPS system, which you remember on the Pi, we named it TestPy, and it's at 172.16.1.130, and this system will be able to connect to it because we allowed everything with 0.0.0.0, which means every address. The one here, again, means that there's only one UPS connected to the system, and then I have my admin username and my highly secure 123456 password, followed by slave at the end of this, letting us know that this is not a master system, but rather this is the slave system. Min supplies uh, one seems a bit redundant, but basically it means that there is one UPS. And then it says the shutdown command is forward slash sbin forward slash shutdown space dash H. If your shutdown system is different on your Linux system, you'll have to change that. And then we have the notify command is forward slash USR forward slash SBIN forward slash UPS sketch. Okay. And then we have uh, a policy frequency and a policy frequency alert. And those two, uh, I just went ahead and copied from the NUT server site. Um, there's a lot of documentation. If you go over on the NUT server site, they give you all kinds of detail. Um, I went back and forth having things fail left and right, but ended up setting host sync to 15 and dead time to 15, and then things magically started working. It's not really clear to me that you ever really need this power down flag forward slash Etsy forward slash kill power. Um, I've got it in there because all the examples I've read online seem to point to the fact that that's required. And then we have a whole series of notify messages which basically are things that are going to come out to your console and get logged in your log file. We've got them for online, on battery, low battery, uh, for shutdown, uh, communications okay, communications bad, uh, shutdown command, uh, replace battery warning, uh, no communication, and no parent. So the parent process isn't running on the parent host, you know. And then... Uh, we have the notify flag uh, 
all these different flags here that we have messages for, we now have flags for, and it basically says, uh, go log them to syslog and then send them to wall. So, so wall is basically the um, Linux command to send things to every logged in terminal, okay? And then exec just means that it has a script to execute, and you're gonna see what that is shortly. And then uh, down here, uh, the RB warn time and uh, and this other setting here, no com warn time and final delay. I just took that verbatim from several examples that I noticed online. So now we're going to do a Control K or Control X and then say yes and then save this thing out. The next file we need is forward slash Etsy, forward slash nut, forward slash nut dot conf. And as you'll recall from last time, uh, if we go down and delete all these things, it just has mode equal to none down here. But we don't want that because mode equals none means do nothing and don't run. And basically, last time we said we were net server on the Pi. So with this one, we're going to be net client because we're a client system wanting to follow what the server system is doing that's actually connected to the UPS system. So now I do a control X, say yes, save, and hit enter to write the file out. Now we want to edit a file called forward slash Etsy, forward slash nut, forward slash UPS sketch.conf. And this file also has a lot of template information in it. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out with the control K's. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in the following. So the command script that we're going to use and we haven't created yet is called forward slash Etsy forward slash nut forward slash UPS sketch dash CMD. And then they have a pipe command and a lock command. Not sure what these are, but I'm just echoing these from all of the examples that I've been reading elsewhere. And then we have a series of directives that basically said when you're on battery, uh, start a timer saying you're on battery for 30 seconds. And then if you become online again, cancel that timer on battery and say we're back online again. And then if we're on battery, you want to start the timer early shutdown, leave it for 30 seconds. And then at low battery, we want to go ahead and execute on battery. And then so on down the line here. So basically there are a series of commands that tells it how to behave with the script that we're about to create. So we go ahead and save this file as well. The last file we need to edit is the script file forward slash Etsy forward slash nut forward slash UPS sketch dash CMD. And this file doesn't yet exist. And we're going to go ahead and put these contents inside of that file. So basically it says what to do if we're on battery and it goes ahead and uh, runs the scheduler command to say UPS is on battery. Um, and then uh, what to do with early shutdown, what to do with critical shutdown and what to do when the UPS goes away. And then what to do if the command comes through here uh, and isn't one of the legal commands. So go ahead and do a control X, save that, and we're done editing that file. Now that we've completed that editing, one thing we want to do is do a sudo chmod and add executable privilege to the script that we just created. The next step that we want to do is we want to restart the nut client, and we're going to do that with a sudo systemctl restart nut dash client. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and test to see whether or not our client works and to get to the server. And the way we're going to do that is with a UPSC test pi at 172.16.1.130, which is the address of the pi connected to the UPS. And it does return the information. And so therefore, we know that we have good connectivity and it works. My choice of test environment for this video was pretty arbitrary by plugging in a Raspberry Pi into a spare UPS unit that I had and allowing it to serve as a UPS server 
and then creating a virtual machine. And the virtual machine actually points back to that UPS server. So the virtual machine is the UPS client. All that's left to test is to unplug that UPS from the wall and force it to go on battery. And once the battery is depleted, this virtual machine will follow the state of that uh, Raspberry Pi and it will perform an orderly shutdown, which is what we want. Unfortunately, all things being equal, when I did this test and unplugged the UPS unit from the wall, spontaneously its inverter failed and as opposed to the fact that it um, was supposed to go on battery, it actually just failed and lost power completely. So I have a UPS with a 100% charged battery, but unfortunately it doesn't switch over to its inverter. So uh, it is, uh, it's an older unit and it's definitely past warranty. So I guess that means buy another unit. In any event, um, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. So in summary, the NUT project provides a set of utilities to monitor and control systems that have connection to a UPS system. A NUT master is a system with a UPS directly connected to a UPS with a USB cable. And a NUT slave is a system on your network that uses the state of the UPS master to decide when to perform a shutdown. And a web server with NUT-CGI provides a web interface into the status of UPS devices on a NUT master server. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.